asking you, have you been loved and acting, and are you a horror fan? Okay, um, I'm going to answer your second question first because that's a shorter answer. Yeah. No, I'm not. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I'm, because I'm a real scaredy cat, so I have a hard time watching horror films. Um, I'm getting better at it because uh, I watch them in the middle of the day now. <laughs> and I have some time to recover before I go to bed. Um, so that's sort of the, the short answer yeah. with horror. How I got into acting, it's a sort of weird roundabout thing. I wanted to be an actor when I was a kid, um, but my parents are both accountants and I'm from Brisbane in Australia and... My family lives in Brisbane. Ah! That's so cool! Hey! Awesome, have you been? Yeah. Nice. Awesome. That's very really cool. I did not expect that in Indianapolis. <laughs> That's very cool. Um, oh, so, yeah, I'm from Brisbane and I didn't think acting was a way to make a living because I didn't know anyone that did that. It seemed like kind of a fairy tale, honestly. Um, so I was really into science and I was going to go and study and go to university and then all of a sudden I was discovered as a model um, and took a weird left turn um, and started modeling and then that kind of led me back to acting because um, I hated modeling and <laughs> I always wanted to go somewhere else from modeling and um, yeah, that's how I kind of got back into acting is that I auditioned for an Australian film and I went through that process and loved it, and yeah, that was a while back. There are a lot of acting classes between then and now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the short version. That's amazing. Yeah. Follow your passion. In the end. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That takes a long way, but you got there. Yeah, I mean, I, I was still passionate about science, so yeah. 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 So, growing up, who inspired you, either in the arts or just in life? You stumped me. <laughs> you fully stumped me. <laughs> she did. She did. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for your help in answering that question. <laughs> That's what people say when they don't know what to say. Yeah, my mind just went fully blank, man. I was like, I've got no answer to that. Um, Actually, I didn't want to go, when I was finishing high school, I sort of started modeling in Australia and um, my agent in Australia wanted to send me to New York and I was really scared. <laughs> I was like, I can't do that. And um, what they don't tell you is that when you're discovered as a model and they go, yeah, we're going to send her to New York, they may pay for it up front but then they bill you for it on the wow. back. So what happens is that you get told, okay, well, we're gonna pay for your flight and we're gonna put you in this apartment, but this is how much the flight costs and you're gonna be paying us rent and you're going to have to pay this back to us. Um, and that just seemed like such a crazy thing to do at 17. You yes. just like, the flight alone was like more money than I'd ever heard of, <laughs> you know? And I was like, and I'm gonna owe this to people and be in debt thousands of dollars just on the hope that I work when I get to New York? That was insane to me. So I didn't really want to go and my mum sat me down and was like, you might really regret it if you don't. And she was like, the worst that's gonna happen is that you come home, and you end up going to the college, yeah. so. Yeah. But that is such a scary leap. Um, yeah. When you really, when you know that you're going to be owing all this money, and what if you don't book your jobs? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You don't go knowing you have a job coming. Like you go on the hope that someone is going to just be like, sure, we like the look of her. We're going to take pictures of her. It's pretty crazy. And now that your look is really not much you can work with. Like, you know, right, either they look at you and they like you right away, or you're like, yes. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about that. No. Right? No. I mean, very little. A few things you can change, but 
Yeah. Yeah. I really know what you can do about that, so that's really, really tough, I yeah. can imagine, right? Yeah. yeah. So, did you stay in New York, or did you go back home? I, uh, I, I would last about a month in New York, and then be like, I can't do it, I hate it. And then I would try somewhere else. <laughs> so I kind of looked out of the suitcase for a few years and kept popping around. I did work, so thankfully I wasn't in debt. Right. Yeah, which is why I think I kept mm-hmm. at it. And I, I just had a hard time settling for a few years. But then I eventually stuck in New York. Okay. And then I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you there now? No. No. <laughs> Then I hated it again. Yeah. <laughs> I started spending time in LA and it was just like, oh, I get to drive in a car ah! and not be on a subway with like bad smells and I get to just like sing at the top of my lungs in my car and no one can hear me. And I, I don't know, I just had more fun that way. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So let's talk about Evil Dead. Okay. Okay. What was your audition like in Evil Dead? How did that come into your life? Um, I made a tape. I, because I'm not a horror fan historically, I'd heard of Evil Dead, but I hadn't watched any of them. Um, so I had a buddy come over, and she's a real horror nerd. Yeah. yeah. She came over and made my tape with me. Um, yeah, and I sent it off into the ether, and then you forget about it, because if you keep thinking about every audition you do, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Because the majority of the time it's a no, not a yes. And a waiting game. Yeah. And that too. So yes. Sometimes it's a yes, most of the time it's a no, and all the time you're waiting. Yes, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About a week later I heard that Lee, the director, Lee Cronin, wanted to have a chat with me. Um, so I was like, well, I've got some movie watching to do. <laughs> So I did, I watched the originals and I watched Lee's prior film, Hole in the Ground. And then we had a great chat and got along really well. And I got the offer. I don't know how much longer after that I got the offer, but it was pretty soon after. Yeah. So what were some of the biggest challenges in playing Ellie? The vomit room <laughs> was absolutely the worst thing that I had to do. Yeah. Everything else I was like, cover me in blood, get me to do weird stunts, and put me upside down, throw me around in a harness, I'm fine. But the vomit rig <laughs> was like torture. <laughs> what, what was involved in all that? For people who don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's because uh, we did everything practically. Evil Dead is known for doing as much as they can um, in camera. Um, so I had uh, a long tube with this like mouthpiece and I had to hide the mouthpiece in my mouth and then they had a huge container of fake vomit which is like the best way I can describe it is like having gallons of somebody else's saliva in your mouth and it's throttled into your mouth through this tube and then it bounces off the mouthpiece that you have hidden in your mouth and comes out in this giant gush and the giant gush hides the tube that it is like there and the force of it because it's like vibrating in your mouth and the volume of (laughs) it it's just it was awful and you can see in the dailies that we did that day like we do a take and i I, like the look of hope on my face after each one like did you get it (laughs) and then you're like okay we're gonna go again and i'd be like okay and i take a big old deep breath and go okay (laughs) yeah then that day at one point they're like we might have to do the vomit again we may have to reshoot it and i was like oh my god please 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 don't make me do it again so how long did that take? The vomit? Yeah. It was probably a half day okay. affair. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I'm like reliving it right now. Sorry, I feel like I've got something else now. <laughs> so clearly that was the most challenging practice. I was for sure the most challenging. Yeah, everything else I was like, I'm, I'm fine with it. I like a good hard day's work. I like a challenge. Um, yeah. Like solving problems, but uh, the vomit was, yeah. 
or just to, yeah, next time I read that in the script, you're like, nope. You're like, pause, <laughs> 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 Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and tell us about filming your finale in the parking garage. How long did that take? What was that like? Ooh, that's a good question because, okay, so we shot chronologically. That's amazing, I read that. Never happens, but right. we got to shoot chronologically um, in New Zealand and it was 2021. And we were about eight days from being finished and uh, there was a COVID case in the community. It got out of quarantine and um, they shut down the country for two months and we were waiting for two months and we started doing the finale sequence. But we were far from finished. Um, and we couldn't at that point just like leave and go away and go, well, we've got enough footage they can edit together a film. Like we didn't have an ending <laughs> no, because we shot chronologically. So um, we, we waited around for the lockdown to be lifted and then we had to come back and do it. And we, the, we called it the Marauder, the final creature. Um, we filmed it so many different ways that I couldn't tell you what the final clips were that we got. And after the COVID lockdown, we couldn't be on set together if we weren't socially distanced. So before the lockdown, I had um, Gabby and Morgan, who play Bridget and Danny, I had them like side by side and we filmed all three of us like kind of <laughs> hands and knees crawling around together. Um, but then after lockdown, we weren't able to do that. So we all had to go on separately and then they stitched our heads together in post after that. And it was really tough because like, you don't know what someone else has gone and done. And I didn't get to see what um, Lily, who played Beth, what she was doing on the other side of the scene because none of us were on set together. So I had no idea like how anything was looking or, or how it was gonna end up until I saw I saw some stuff in India when I had to come back in and do that. But yeah, it was a huge, like a whole mystery to me. <laughs> like, did we do it? I don't know if we did it. Yeah, you have to trust the ones that are doing it that they know what they're doing. <laughs> and Lee knows what he's doing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really impressed when I saw what he done. Yeah, yeah. Genius is all of them. Yeah, and the odds were stacked against him as well. I can't believe what he accomplished. Yeah, yeah. So, aside from the moments. Yeah. <laughs> I know I went on and on about it. Well, you know? what is your most memorable scene that you shot? But clearly, yeah. clearly that is the most memorable because you were traumatized. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely the worst. I, the peephole was my favorite sequence, both to film and to watch. Yeah, for sure. Amazing. Yeah, that was really fun and very like challenging, but in a really good way, not like vomit challenging. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, it, it's like a dance. You have to learn all of this choreography, get the timing of everything right, and the timing of like, I have to come and Gabe has popped up in the peep hole and I come and I rip his throat. They had two rigs only. I, I had two shots to get that right <laughs> with that rig. And I, it, yeah, and I have to dig my fingernails into his neck and rip this thing. And if I don't get the right part, I could seriously hurt this guy, <laughs> which is just like pressure's on. And then I have to do that, and then the minute he, I pushed him away, I now have to get shot in the stomach. So it's like the timing of it all, and they're counting out the beats to everything for me, so I could react on different numbers. Yeah. Oh, I say it, um, choreography and horror films specifically, and action films too. It is a dance, and it's and very it's each department. Yes, as well. and it's yeah. very very important that everyone is exactly where they should be, or someone is going to get hurt. Yeah, the camera has to move at a certain time. You yes. have to hit your mark and do something. Someone has to react. The blood has to gush at the right time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. But it's really cool though. Uh, this is like normal, like, like none of the other jobs that I've had as an actor, I really had that kind of experience. So, yeah. So aside from the moment working on a horror film was a very positive experience for you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, also because I get to play the monster, which is like the fun part as well. Exactly. I, yeah, I don't know if I could do Final Girl because I think you have to be scared the entire time. But then you'd be courageous 
and these monsters. Yeah, but still, the majority of the time you're scared and you're trying to make that interesting, but you've got one emotion to play. Whereas when you're the monster, you just get to do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> monsters <laughs> and villains are always fun. But you know, let's talk about our final girls for a second there. Okay. There are a couple that, and we talked about this on our podcast recently for Hellraiser 3. We talked about how a lot of final girls are grown in into the movie. They they start off scared and weak, oh, yeah. if I can say that, and they grow into this powerhouse hero, heroine, where in Hellraiser 3 specifically and in other movies, she's kind of already that strong person, and she was, she was frightened, but she wasn't scared so much. She was like, okay, I guess I gotta like Figure out how I'm going to get out of this alive. Let's do it. So there are all sorts of different final girls. Is my point. There are. Yeah. I was. I just meant as an actress. For me personally, yes. I think I would struggle. Yeah. Yeah. I think with the right one, you could do it well. What do you guys think? Should we be a good final girl, right? <laughs> I mean, not real life, I'm not. <laughs> it's called acting. It is called acting, yeah. <laughs> okay, do we have any audience questions? In the front. Um, how long did it take to get into makeup, and did you leave with any souvenirs from the shoot? Uh, okay, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I stole a little thing. Because I didn't totally trust that they were going to give me the things that I'd asked for. <laughs> so I was like, I'm also just going to steal this all. Um, I got a little silver jewellery box. That's what I stole. Um, and I also got, I took, um, Ellie had really cool clothes in her bedroom that we didn't really get to see on screen. And there was this beautiful floral robe thing that I, I was like, I have to have that. Um, <laughs> so I took that and um, there was a really cool vase as well from the set. I wanted the hanging bamboo chair, but it felt like a really difficult thing to ship back to the US from New Zealand. So I, I didn't take that. Yeah, I'm kicking myself for that decision now. Um, Sorry, what was your other question? How long, how, they have, yeah. Um, depending on the day, it was about four to six hours in makeup, because I sort of deteriorate over the course. Um, yeah, so it started out at about four hours, and then it started taking longer and longer, and at the end of the day, it would be about an hour to get it all taken off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, did you have any interaction or get any feedback from Bruce Campbell uh, about your performance? Not while I was doing it. Since, no. Since then? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm just I, crazy I, I got to meet Bruce and Sam at South by Southwest when we premiered. Um, because we filmed in New Zealand during 2021, getting anyone into the country was really difficult. Um, I got lucky that I got a spot because there was another actress that was cast in one of the other roles and um, she ended up losing it because they couldn't get her into the country and they ended up having to cast a local out of New Zealand, which was just heartbreaking, like, very sad. Yeah, anyway, long story, sorry. Um, <laughs> Got number go one. <laughs> um, so Bruce and Sam were watching dailies, but remotely. They weren't in New Zealand yet. Um, so that was happening, and they're overseeing things, but they really did trust Lee to do what he wanted to do, like in the coolest way. Um, but Lee also, he's such a fan. I, I think it's obvious when you watch it because of the, but like there's so many Easter eggs. He was clearly inspired a lot, especially by Evil Dead 2. Um, they, I think they really trusted him and knew that the film was in good hands. Um, but yeah, I got to meet them at South by Southwest because they were so lovely and complimentary and very easy to hang out with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Kristen and I'm actually like a young filmmaker and I have a film premiering tomorrow here. And I was wondering, like, based off your best experiences, like, what do you think makes like, a good actress or actor in a group of relationship? Ooh. Hmm. 
that's, that's a good question. And I would, I would guess that it's probably different for different people. Um, what I like, um, I like really thorough communication from someone. Um, if something isn't working, I don't have like an ego. I want to know it's not working so I can fix it. Um, Lee, at the same time, like I want to feel very comfortable and confident to just try things, um, like in a judgment-free zone. I think that's really important, um, especially when you have uh, like a wild character, um, feeling feeling comfortable to fail, because um, not everything works, you know. Um, I think that's really, that was probably the most important thing. Um, and Lee said from the get-go that he wanted me to feel comfortable to just do whatever the hell I wanted and we would just keep going um, if something wasn't gonna work. Uh, yeah. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. I'm just wondering, um, your performance felt a lot like the first movie, the demons in the first movie. So how do you get in the headspace to be possessed by a demon? <laughs> No, not really, no. I think, um, this is going to sound weird. I feel like I've always had a little dead-eyed Ellie in me. I, uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to do a bit with my brother to make him laugh. Um, I would pretend to be dead. And then when he came to check to see if I was dead. And like, he knew I wasn't, it was a game that we would play. I, I would sort of like quickly open my eyes and then I'd be like, so, you're the one that killed me. <laughs> and then he would laugh. And I never went further than that one line that I had, so you're the one that killed me. <laughs> it wasn't like I was about to exact revenge or something, I don't know. But uh, I just, I don't know, I just always played around in a weird way. <laughs> and, yeah. It came naturally, is what I'm trying to decide. I don't know what that says about me, but yeah. It's really fun to be a bad guy, because I mean, you don't live your life like that, you know? Um, yeah. Did you expect such like a big reaction to your character? Not just like to Evil Dead, but like to your character specifically, because like people love you and your character very much. Um, no. <laughs> I didn't, but then there started to be some clues along the way. Um, one of our execs, Rommel Adam, he, um, I really like working with him. He's a total film nerd and very creative, and um, I, I loved getting together with him while I was filming and discussing things and ideas. And, um, he sort of planted a seed. He was like, this is going to be big, this is going to be big. And I'm like, and, you know, it's like sometimes people say stuff like that and you don't want to get your hopes up. Um, but then we had a test screening, <laughs> which I tried to go to, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> which is probably for the best, because like a lot of people hate it, you know? Yeah. Like, um, Devastated. Yeah, but a uh, little birdie maybe sent me the scores <laughs> from the test screening and that's when I started getting a little excited. Uh, yeah. What was your favorite line of yours from the movie? Free from all you duties I can pass For sure. <laughs> It's still way too It's so messed up. <laughs> can you scream? Um, I, I probably can, yeah, but it's like really girly. I, whenever I had to like, I'm actually a, a kind of a silent human. Like, this is what I've learned as an actress. Um, Whenever I've had to do any stunts or like get physically hurt, I don't make a sound. 
when that happens, and then I have to go back in for ADR, and they're like, we need you to like react to getting hit, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know, I'm just taking a hit, but... <laughs> which is weird, apparently. Other, other people verbalise that, and I don't. Um, and I, I tend to, if I do verbalise things, it's very high-pitched in a way that I don't like, so then I go in and I try to fix it in ADR and make it lower pitch, because I don't want to go... Ah! <laughs> don't feel bad, because... In real life, I am not a big screamer or shrieker, and when I am a frightened or a scared, people have fire flight. I have freeze and go. Yeah, me too. Like, like nothing happens. I don't. Oh, I'm dead. I am dead. Yep. In, in a horror film, I am yes. the one that goes ah, uh, and then the drag off. Yes. Because it could have moved. Yep. Nothing. Me too. Yes. <laughs> me too. Yes. So don't feel bad about not being able to scream on command. Yeah. I can't scream when it's genuine. I have to work on it too. Yeah. Like I have to like calm. If I'm doing the acting thing, I have to concentrate on trying to make it happen. Yeah, you've got to not work natural. against your instincts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like my, something in here, it just locks up. I feel it you. It locks up and it won't happen. Yeah. Have you heard of fawn? The there's fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. But that that's when you you're like <laughs> instead of freeze it's sort of like freezing but you kind of are like oh you have a knife in your hand I, I would do that oh, well, and, and you try to just talk your way talk it through out. it and like get them to calm down and yeah I I guess I can be like that I've had to de-escalate certain situations in customer service um, people are pretty cray, folks. Um, but, but yeah, so we, customer service is a very interesting life. If anyone out there has, not, has done it, they know all about it. Sometimes you have to de-escalate a crazy situation and try, you know, try to come out. But these horror movies have taught me, you know, try to talk to crazy. <laughs> okay, guys, any more questions? Steve. Uh, how many eggs did you go through, and was any of the kitchen scene improv? Uh, I have no idea how many eggs we went through. And also, I'm sorry guys, but there was a body double and there are pictures, like there are clips, the, the feet in the elevator, those toes, like trying to cling to the floor like that, not my feet. Um, and there's some stuff with like throwing the eggs in. If there are close ups of hands and feet in the film, most likely they're not mine. Um, they had a second unit that would do those shots while I was actually like doing things where my face was on camera. Um, which I fought against because I was like, no, but the placement of the hand and I want control of, over this whole character. And, one of the producers had to kind of take me aside and was like, we don't have time. So, that's that. So, they went through lots of eggs even when I wasn't on set, is my point to that story. Um, was there any improv in the kitchen scene? Which kitchen scene? The one with, where you, you come in and you just start putting all the eggs in the pan. And oh. you're, you're kind of catatonic. There, there was improv, but not... Um, mm. I improv'd a lot during everybody else's coverage because they had heard the same story over and over again. Because I think we shot my coverage first. Um, so I kept telling different stories so that they had new horrific things to react to. Um, but none of that makes it into the film. But yeah, so. Did they ever react? in a strange way to your improv, like, like, oh yeah, I said really weird things. <laughs> and I didn't know that I had such darkness in my brain until that day. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was fun though. It was like a horror film. Yeah, I was like, maybe I should write. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What is your best mommy's with the maggots now? Oh man! Hey, what? <laughs> they did this to me at a 
Film Festival as well. Me too, Zoe Oh God, it's just never gonna be as good as on the day and on set. And I feel like I'm gonna disappoint you, but I will do my best because you've asked, but I'm gonna blush. <laughs> Mommy's with the maggots now. <laughs> shows and um, film, uh, so I think it's very normalised for us hearing it growing up and I think it's not as common for you guys, like I would say pretty much every single day of your life you're hearing an American accent even though you live in Australia but it's not the same here, you guys don't hear an Australian accent every single day. Um, so that's why I think we're probably, we have a bit of a better ear for it. Um, but I don't know, I feel like I kind of, sometimes it's really easy for me, some days I feel like it's a little bit harder. Um, if I haven't been doing it very much, it feels a bit rusty and I have to kind of, you know, I do speak with it when I, I'm not a method actor, but if I have to do an American accent, I'm in that accent the entire time. Um, when I filmed Mist, I spoke with an American accent the entire time I was there. Like, I didn't take a minute to not do that. Um, yeah, and that was about a five month shoot. And it just makes it easier then, so, yeah. Did you have a hard time doing like multiple, like having to do multiple takes because you were having like too much fun on set? <laughs> Oh man, oh, I, I like doing a lot of takes. Um, the challenge, honestly, a lot of the time for me was that I would, um, I would be in hair and makeup for a long time um, and then typically the day would run behind and I would wait and wait and wait and then I would get onto set for the last 20 minutes of my day and I would get two takes, three takes. Um, yeah, it, we, we really got into a bit of a pattern <laughs> when that would happen, which was like a lot of pressure, but I also kind of like pressure. I think I work well under. Um, yeah, and it kind of like, there's something in it that you're just like, well, I have to do it. There's no other option. Um, yeah, so I would have loved to have had more takes sometimes, um, but I still felt like Lee and I wouldn't have moved on if we didn't feel like we didn't get something, so, yeah. I have a wrap-up question for you. So I would love to know, is there a moment on the set, and it doesn't have to be the Eagle Dance, it's any set, that has taught you something important, either about the industry or on your personal life? You are not difficult, 
Sometimes people are unreasonable and it is good for you to hold your boundaries, especially as a woman. That's all. Woo! Everyone, give it up.